fine, I'm sure. Director of PMJ Productions. I'd like to welcome you all to the uh, reading of Stolen by Ethlyn Butchlader. I hope I've said that right because she's in the audience. <laughs> and straight after the show, we're going to do a talk back for about 15 minutes and then we'll head into the bar and you can talk to the actors and to the writer, of course, about anything about the play because it is based on a true story. And we'll hear more about the artistic process afterwards. I'd like to say hi to our virtual audience because this is being live streamed to the world. So hi guys, hi to you here, and I'd love to hear what you've got to say after this show. Thank you very much for all for coming. Hugger! 
to me, asking me for my help. You must open the door so we can begin our work together. If you won't go away, then come in. There is no lock. Customs agent, the tax officer, whoever she was, after she'd taken everything except what you see, she mailed me your card. Perhaps she felt guilty. I don't know, nothing makes sense anymore. Her note said that I needed you, someone like you for the court proceedings. So you wrote to me? Well, I'm glad that you did. I didn't want to. I considered it for a very long time. All I wanted was the ones who were stolen. All of them gone. My family. I realized if I wanted to see them again, I needed your help. Is it a crime to inherit what your father has bequeathed to you? Is it a crime to cherish family? To live alone and harm no one? Are these now crimes in 21st century Germany? Hagelitz, you must start at the beginning. I'm here to help you tell your story. Are you? Or are you like all the others two years ago? I'm here to help you, I promise. I have no choice, I see that. There is much I must do. Munich tomorrow, the 21st of September, will be cloudy, the 50% chance of precipitation. High of 14 degrees with an overnight low of 9. Thank you for listening to BR Classic Radio 103.2. Now, in 2010, we celebrate 20 years in giving Germany the best of light classical listening. I cannot bear the thought. Again, another choice. I wish my father here, yeah, my sister, they would know what to do. My mother, Dune, it was her terrible choice, but here we are. This dilemma is so unbearable. Oh, how many times must I make this unspeakable act? So I did not dream it. But wishing it otherwise does not make it so. Soon we shall be out of money again. So I must the terrible choice and make it today, otherwise none of us will survive. You are my responsibility, my loving charges. Is anyone going to stand forward? Help me, please. Are there no volunteers for the sake of the family? Very well, then. on the beach. Compliments of the artistic talents of Herr Max Lieberman. You have each other, boys. I hate to see you go after five decades, but you will fetch a pretty penny. You are such a strong, virile, handsome couple, mounted on equally handsome steeds, striding through the surf. Very sorry, but off you must go. So, you refuse to go? Very well then, Roswell and Casper. 
I love you too much anyway. But who shall it be? Who will leave us richer in pocket but poorer in spirit? My beautiful rough boy, my one and only lion tamer. I fear you will not understand. Uh, please try, just try not to be angry. You sent for me. Yes, I could not come so quickly. I belong here with you. I acknowledge that. The circus life is, is lonely. The lions and the tiger, I must keep them. How is it said? At bay. Cats, how are they? Have you seen them? The same forever. Aren't we all in time frozen? Well, my child, you are not dressed for that. They are waiting, dependent. I have taught them to be patient, even to beg, yet time counts. <clears throat> Do you think that is a good trade? Caring enough to beg. I think as much as any of us, but not much about caring. There are limits, as you say, among us within the family. Well, I would not argue with that. When have you ever argued anything? I have never seen you pick up the spear or the whip or uh, any weapon of the sort. Why? Don't you ever get tired? Tired of pretending? I just love being with you. I'm not pretending. Then what would you call this? Something else. I want to be with you. So please don't let quarrel. Ah, that's my nature, the want of it. but as you say, limits. You, we do have limits, don't we? Always. Between man and beast, the real and unreal, what is and what is not, the created, the imagined. Everyone in the family knows all of this, all of it. So, no, nothing. I, I didn't want. What is it, old man? Speak. Should I let the beasts loose to have their way with you at my bidding? They could tell you apart in seconds. Is that what is going to happen? Don't okay. you blaspheme your love me. and finally deny my existence. You are easy to confuse, old man. All right. Just let me think. All right, there is something you need to know. You are like one of my lions. You could be so powerful, so strong, but so timid, so groveling, and what? You're going away forever. I'm sorry, I'm going <laughs> Not likely. Me! No, I, I, I mean, yes, yes. I am one of grandfather's favorites. I don't want. Want what? I oh, had to. Want what? You had to what? A deal. I made a deal. It was absolutely necessary with the dealer in Zurich. We, the rest of us, have to The enough. rest of us? The rest of us, old man? Who do you think is in charge? Well, I am not. We, you and I, we leave tomorrow. So then, here I go. I'm not surprised. You have never loved me. You always loved my cats more than me. I have always admired you. And love? Have you stolen more love? New love? Is that why you have no need of me? 
How pure is your family, Cornelius? What will you do? How will you fight to keep or lose them? Who will you abandon next? Pure. I think not. Find yourself a weapon, old man. You're going to need at least one. You won't live forever, but I will. You'll see. You say you love family. So much for family. whom I had in mind. It is I. Miss Casper, with you. Are you alone? Yes. What are you afraid of? Rosper, come in. I am already in. Yes, yes you are. How was it today? The beach, how was it? Like any November day along the North Sea Strand. Cold, then. Yes, and cloudy. Many white caps. The horses were spirited, but I had no trouble. Casper, on the other hand. Casper, sweet, gentle Casper. Yes, he was afraid of his own shadow, timid as his gilding. I question myself. No response, then, yet. Why do you pursue him, then? Why do I continue to woo him? I'm no different. The same as everyone. So are you. We all want a family. A family to turn to. But I am your family. <laughs> no, not so. I am your family, yes. But you are not mine. Oh, I'm sorry. I've hurt you. Do you not see the difference in us, me and you, all of us and you? Do you never have moments of clarity? We both come from a world of stories, a world of other people doing it, lives shaped by other people's hands. You dwell in the past. I prefer the ongoing present. Now is the place of power. Step backwards. I look at you because I need you. <coughs> Delusions, Cornelius. Illusions. Half truths. Lies about what really happened. <sighs> I did not shape our lives. Life shaped us. Mm. We cannot be strangers, then. How many decades? Have we been together? Surely you haven't forgotten when the war was. Depending on the day, I forget <laughs> or remember. I've been upset. So upsetting what has You are young, you're strong, and so smart. You will help me know what to do. Really? Why do you think that? Oh, look at you. So strong, so virile, so sure of your way in the world. I am a homosexual, Cornelius, conceived in London in 1901. I am not strong enough for the times into which I was born. Not nearly strong enough. Manly, yes, but not strong. But, but times have changed. When you came to Berlin in the 30s, there was a freedom, an underground. <laughs> yes, and you were then what, six or seven years old? What would you know of an underground, eh? I have known an underground my whole life. My father lived two lives, uh, you know. Your father, your father. Here we go again, Cornelius. The argument, it never changes. Your father was a thief. 
Don't bring my father into this room. He's dead. I will not have you desecrate his name. I think of him every day. Do you hear? Every day. He saved you. You could be more grateful. You called me, as always. Is this what you want to talk about? Again and again, over and over and over. Tell me something new. Such as? You know everything already, don't you? Oh, do I? Yes, of course you do. It doesn't feel that way. You're the one who seems unsure, not clear about what really happened. Don't be ridiculous. My father and now me, we saved you from destruction, from being thrown away in the gutter, or worse. <gasps> worse? Yes, worse, burned. As a so-called degenerate. Let's compare stories, shall we? What do you mean, compare stories? Our history. How we came to be. How it is we are in each other's lives. No. Well, why not? What are you afraid of? To lose. You can always make me disappear, Cornelius. It makes me sad and confused. I am shy, you know. Well, yes, that you definitely are. But it might do you good to sort through things. To finally talk about where it all starts. No, I tell you, no. Suit yourself. I'm leaving then. If you have nothing more to say to me, then pick someone else out of your drawer and moon over them. <coughs> Wait. Why? I will tell you. And then I will tell you. Oh, no. Rosma, please be kind to me. You are all I have now. I'm all you have now. You must be joking, Cornelius. You are. There's bloody more than a thousand of us at your command. That's an army, for God's sake. Not really. It's not that simple. Sometimes. Sometimes what, old man? Who's in charge here, anyway? It is certainly not me. More than you, you know, I need you here. Come on, Cornelius. Talk to me. Sit by me and talk to me. Come on. All right, but just for a while. Good man. Now, let's have a little chat. For old time's sake. Okay? It is your hopes and needs we honor here, Cornelius. Our lives are quite two dimensional compared to yours. So, what do you remember about your father? He always looms so large. Brilliant. A hero. Really? Not everyone thinks so, you know. Well, if they don't, if they don't, they are simply wrong. Oh, all right, all right. Calm down, Cornelius. So, tell me about it. It began much further back. My family on both sides. The arts were everything. My grandfather was a composer, a scholar, a civic leader. And your father's grandmother was a Jew, yes? <coughs> that is not what matters. <laughs> Calm now, Cornelius. Jewish lineage travels through the mother. That makes your father a nut of a Jew. One who strangely operated at the highest levels of Nazi Germany. It takes quite a bit of cunning, maybe even telling a few lies. Quite a few to do that, wouldn't you say? My father 
suffered for his Jewish heritage. <laughs> yes, that surely is suffering. Buying art for the fur. It's much more complicated than that, I tell you. No. I will tell you. All you do is whine. Don't you ever question anything? Where it all came from, where your father acquired all of this? I learned <clears throat> watching my father. You must never admit to anything. I learned that you must never tell anyone anything. What I say, what he said. You must never volunteer the truth about anything. And that's People make you. their own associations and conclusions. And that got you where? Alone and talking to me. <coughs> Perhaps Hildebrand Gerlitz was not the best example of a father. Of how to act ethically, Cornelius. Perhaps I should be going. Anyway. No, please, please. You, you must see my father saved a, a whole culture's treasures. The world owes him gratitude, owes him everything for the modern art that he alone saved at great personal risk. Really? Well, do go on. But I still want to compare versions. I am sure that yours and mine are not the same. Stop taunting me. My version is real. I was there, you weren't. I am timeless. Yes, I am of a certain place and time, but I transcend that to know many, many things. That is why you love me. For my beauty and my wisdom. I'm waiting. My father ran two museums. In 1925, and Hamburg beginning in 1930. My father showed the avant garde works he loved and believed in. My father lost both those jobs for what he was showing, but his commitment to the modern masters of the time was total, absolute, and total. Many times driven out. He fell many times too. But he always got back on his feet. And then? When I was a child, we moved because of my father's complicated work situation. I remember playing with my sister Benita amidst the paintings Chagall, Picasso, Monet, Lieberman, Beckman. Everywhere we moved, they came with us. We hung them. We lived with them. We loved them. They were vital. Vital as the air we breathed. in putting his mark on all of them so that we would always know they were ours. He collected them. He documented them. He hung them. And we benefited from them. My family. My parents. My sister Benita and myself. My point exactly. When we get to my side of things, the side you know but won't admit that it's actually happened. You are twisting my words, my intentions again. Am I? Oh, I wish my father was here. He would convince you in the ways that I cannot. Yes. We stayed in Hamburg, <clears throat> and my father was an art dealer. He also had a gallery. And what did he show? 
by that time to show the art that he loved, showing it was dangerous. Why? Because of that monster Hitler, that's why. People on the wrong side of things died. Yes, that is very much true. There was a great culture of mistrust. People did and did not do the things they were told they must. So, what did Hildebrand do? My father was always smart. He began to show more traditional work instead. And where did he get all of this? Don't you need to know that? From, from dealers, from museums, of course. He didn't get me and Casper riding on the beach from a dealer or a museum. <coughs> but what are you implying? My father was scrupulous, absolutely scrupulous. Is that so? I'm not implying anything, old man. It's a fact that the painting of me and Casper riding on the beach was stolen from David Friedman, a sugar refiner from Breslau. This is so because he lent the painting to museums many times. Lastly, in 1927, when Friedman died, his entire estate was seized. The Nazis took the paintings and sent his daughter Charlotte to a death camp. Spoils of victory over the dead and the wicked. No, my father wouldn't have done Taking advantage of dues who needed to liquidate every valuable to feed for their lives. Hmm? And what about getting money to um, pay the tax levied only on dues? You are wrong and hateful. God, why am I talking to you? Because there is no one else. And am I wrong? There are other facts in play here, Cornelius. No matter how much you loved your father and tried to impress him, Stop. missing him and his guidance is no excuse to lie about his nature. It changes nothing. I want to stop. This conversation is hateful and has taken a very wrong turn. It's all you, Cornelius. Don't you know that by now? Do you not even know that, much less that your father stole all of this art? Your father could be a lying opportunist, and he often was. Tell me, with his Jewish heritage, how did he escape the purchase? I told you, my father very clever. <laughs> Indeed. There you go again. My father had excellent collections to purchase art. Some of it was off the degenerate label, to be destroyed or sold to raise money for Hitler's war on the world. So, my father rescued what was to be burned, or trampled in the mud, or sold in other countries. And how did that work? Your father was cutting terrible deals in Germany with desperate Jews, traveling to Paris to wheel and deal, currying favor with Hitler, downplaying his own Jewish heritage, amassing a personal fortune of stolen art much of which was condemned by Hitler as degenerate. Quite a busy man. I think, even when he paid for art, he was a thief with no conscience. Paying 20% of the market value or less is not honorable. I'm only sorry he died in the car crash so he couldn't be tried and punished. If you knew, if you could understand the passion my father had for this work, for you. Yes, that I don't doubt. But why do you refuse the truth? It is as plain as the paintings on these walls. My father died when I was 24 years old. 
the weight of the artistic world fell on my weak young shoulders. Always, always, always my father drilled into me that I must always guard these precious works, these specimens of beauty, passion, and peace. Culture itself. What really do you know of that, Roswell? I have known it my whole life. For 81 years I have lived with this. So you assumed this as a burden then? You've never admitted that before. I am not, nor ever shall be the man that Hildebrand Gorlitt was. The best, the very best I can do. If you understand, I must protect my father's life work. It was his only charge on me. In this, I must not fail. When did we become so real? Was it yesterday? Or forever? For we are far more than a collection of canvases and paper, aren't we, old man? You break my heart. Just go. There is Nothing more to say just now. Just go as you came. Perhaps we will speak again. You are my beautiful son, but you are still too painful and rude. I must rest. Be gone. Uh, it had to be done. I had to do it. He had to do it. There is no one else. Sometimes it betrays. Shall I call someone? A medic? No, thank you. I, I, I will be fine. Thank you. Very well. Do you have any other documents? Proof of residence? An e-card, perhaps? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't. Please have a look inside your wallet. Perhaps you have something else that could substantiate you. I'm not sure who you are or where you pay your taxes. <laughs> what was your business in Switzerland? Nothing, no, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Where are you on business? Oh. Were you or weren't you on business? And if you were, what was it? I was seeing an old associate and saw him. And what is your line of work? I don't have one. Retired then? From what occupation? Yes. Yes. Occupation then? I'm sorry, I don't want to. Please, open your wallet. I would like to see what you are carrying. <laughs> you must. It's a dangerous amount of cash to be travelling alone with. How much do you have there? I'm not sure exactly. As you likely know, there is a limit as to how many euros a person can carry at one time. How many do you have there? I haven't any idea. Please take it out and count it before me. It's my only duty, you understand? <laughs> yes, officer. Five hundred. 
thousand. One thousand. No, but you have miscounted already. Would you prefer I do it? Uh, if you insist. Herr Gerlich, with you as witness, I have counted your funds. You are personally carrying well over 9,000 euros. Why are you carrying so much cash? Tell me. Herr Gerlich, I need your answer, please. I don't know. I don't know. Very well. You are within the legal limit, but only barely. I would urge you to think more carefully about your arrangements. You could be in great danger if someone were to discover your secret. You are a great distance from safe. Questions, personal questions, 
where I lived, where I paid my taxes. Questions, questions. So what of it? She took so many notes in her little book. Oh, I'm so afraid. Now they know about me. So they know you have a lot of currency. What of it? This is the end of it. I feel it. Oh, I'm so afraid. What will I do? You won't do anything, Connie, because there's nothing to be done. Put on some music, pour some schnapps, and let's <laughs> dance! Oh, really? I don't feel like Oh, it. come on, my little sausage. You must dance when you have problems. Dance them away. Oh. You know I won't stop pestering oh. you until you give in. Oh. oh, come on, my little sausage. It's cold outside, but I can warm you up. Why you keep me? I keep you close, Fräulein, because... Because you love me, yeah? We have some loves, you giggled. With us, life is good, if a little confined. But there is room enough to waltz, so let's waltz! <laughs> You're still cute, even if you've shrunk three sizes since we met.
we suspected you for tax evasion, but I see now we need to amend those charges. We have found here something else entirely. These artworks, so many famous names should be hard to explain, Herr Gerlitz. Agent Zeit, we have a much bigger, more complex, very serious situation here. We're looking at complete inventory and removal. Call for agents, at least 10, immediately. Get three for the master bedroom, two for the second bedroom. The rest can work here with me in the living room. I think what we have here is a trove of art that is stolen. my family is not a home. It's just an address out of the rain. What have you done? Look what you have done to us. My job. I am following orders and such a discovery should surely earn me a Earn time. you? Is that what this is about? Earn you what? I have wanted nothing in my life but to live with my art. They are not your pictures. How can you say that, you, you monster? I have lived with them my whole life. We are parts of each other. How will I live? Do you need medical assistance? Shall I call someone, an ambulance, your doctor? Oh, if only I had. Do you need medical assistance? I wish you no personal harm. The governments of Munich and Germany intend you no personal harm. If only I had lived somewhere else, none of this would have happened. In Switzerland, far, far from Munich, the source of all evil, where the Nazis first arose. Oh, I should never have acquiesced to my mother. Herr Gerlitt, I'm sorry to say you simply must sign these papers acknowledging that you surrendered the artworks to the government. I surrendered nothing. You have stolen them from me. We had your implied consent. You watched us work. You knew what we were doing. And what is an 81-year-old man supposed to do against dozens of you? We are not against you, Herr Gerlitt. We are for the rightful owners of these works. They can't possibly all be yours. It's obvious they must be stolen, Nazi art. Yes, stolen. They are stolen in the last four days. Who am I to talk to? Who will welcome and embrace me? What is my reason for living? I think I should have someone come in and check on you. A social worker, perhaps, and mental health. I can see this has all been very stressful for you. Are you suicidal? <laughs> I can hardly believe you care. You don't understand anything, do you? No, I am not going to kill myself. I would have get my family back if I did. But please do not send anyone to check on me or evaluate me. I have always minded my own life. Someone from outside would be a violation. I will just sit here until I die. A television, perhaps. Perhaps a television would keep you busy. Television. I stopped watching television in 1963. Nothing to do with real life or the arts. 
Peg Ellett, I'm sorry to say you simply must sign these documents saying that you surrender the 1,406 works to us. You may get some of them back at some point if you can prove any of them are truly yours and not belonging to Jews before the war. I As an attorney would be helpful. I will sign nothing. Go. All I wanted to do is live with my pictures. Go. Very well. I shall indicate you refuse to sign. I don't know what legal bearing this will have, for of course there will be court proceedings. Tax evasion is the least of it now. You are liable for a long separation from your art whilst this all gets sorted out. Go, I tell you, go! Shall I open the curtains? There's no longer any need to protect the works from sunlight. Sunlight is not what worries me. It's people like you! Strip them from me. Why couldn't they just have waited? Waited until I am dead. The only thing they left me is the broken lock to my door. What can it protect now? Nothing. Not even me. Especially not me. Cornelius. Father. I wondered if you'd come. It's been a long time. Nearly six decades. Yes. I am here. Just as my sister Cornelia painted. You are in trouble, yes? Yes. That is why I'm here. To berate me? I haven't the strength for that. Besides, I am managing that quite well on my own. You have the strength. Tell me. Tell you? Don't you know? Haven't you eyes to see? Yes. They're all gone. Losing you so long ago. My mother and my sister beneath her. Those deaths were easier than losing my whole family. My real family. So many of them all gone. What you protected from Hitler, bombs, the Nazis, the Russians, the Americans. I have lost to Germany's bureaucrats. <coughs> you stood up against them all. And I fell before a simple locked door. Yes. Why? You know why. I am weak. I have always been weak. It's not just my years. I have always been weak. Have you? In every way. You knew that. Then why would I trust you with a collection worth today one billion euros? You, you didn't trust me. You died that horrible night. Giving something or letting something fall from your hand that must be picked up. These are very different things, Father. Yes. What do you know? did my best. My best wasn't good enough. I wasn't good enough to see through my life's one mission. What do you know of loneliness? Something. Not everything. I have many secrets. 
they make no difference. Yes? Oh, my love. Did you? Did I find? I, I, I found it. Yes. Why did you have to die? I wasn't ready. I was too young. I didn't know anything. You were 24. But you learned. Yes? Not enough. Did you steal those pictures? You'll never know that, Cornelius. Just like everyone else. You'll never know the circumstances around each one. I hate you for it. What does it matter? If any crimes were committed, the statute of limitations ran out long ago. Really, Cornelius, in the long run, Take the long view. It is paper, pigment, graphite, a few pieces of clay, a few bits of metal. Why are you talking like this? This isn't you. You love these works. I know you did. Perhaps. Perhaps not. No, you're confusing me. I don't understand. Ah, but I think you do. We lived in many places, didn't we? Yes. Yes, for your work. You lost those jobs because you weren't afraid of the new, brave way that artists showed us the world. Perhaps I was a coward. Perhaps I was a savior. Perhaps an opportunist. Greedy, a criminal. Is that the point? I don't know. I don't understand. Oh, my heart, I would have died for them. Why? Ultimately, I loved them for their stories. The more I looked at them, the more they told me. And what did they tell you? They made me belong to a world of living beings. With them, I knew I was alive. When my heart had no place to turn, when my being, my life was ground down to a small, thin, flat place, as flat as the canvas and paper, where friends, neighbors, and fellow citizens dwell. When this happened, and it happens to every living soul, when birds can barely sing through winter's warmth. These souls were the ones who gave me solace, who made me alive, who brought me comfort, peace, caress, Beauty. Put yourself in the way of beauty. Didn't you used to say that, Father? Yes, perhaps I did. Transfiguration. Power. Honor. For I could not stand in the harsh sunlight of the world on my own. These souls brought the world to me, and they never failed me. 
everyone in this world eventually fails all the others. Yes, we ride horses on the beach, we argue, we kiss, we dance. For you, Father, these were precious objects, specimens of mastery, insight, and breakthrough. For me, they were my home life, my real life, as real and vital to me as anything that passes for flesh and blood. I, I did not steal this family. Some said I did. My family, my life, it was you who gave them to me. How you got them, I don't know. But tell me, Father, what do you know of loneliness? I, too, have known loss. Oh, yes. The anguish of accident and disease. These commonplace, often expected tragic losses. I didn't lose anything. And to have stolen from me those souls so beautiful that should have lasted forever. Powerless. I sat and watched the death of 1,406 loved ones. Father, do you know of such a story? Did you steal my family? No. Do I believe you? and complicated matter of Cornelius Gurlitt. Your Honour. Where is your client, Councillor? Is he late? Why so detained? These are serious matters. Your Honour, my client is unable to be with us today. Why? The court does not take this offence kindly. Your Honour, no offence is meant. As you may be aware, my client is advanced in years. Ah, uh, age is of no exempt before the courts of Germany. We are aware, both myself and my client. He my client is not well. How so? Physically? Mentally? I am not well. I have been seeing a specialist for seven years. Again, this does not excuse him from his German civic duty to appear when charged with tax evasion, that in his case runs to very different and difficult ends. Your Honour, my client is currently bedridden at home. How long has this been the case? For several months, ever since he was released from hospital. What is the prognosis? Tenuous, Your Honour. Why did you not inform the court of this situation sooner so that proceedings could be rescheduled? The Federal Republic of Germany and the world are watching this affair with great scrutiny. The very reputation of this court itself is at stake. Is this weakness or insolence? Whatever happens, this must be resolved. I will die. I must learn to trust you in all things. The status of the artworks and my possession of them must be cleared. My health must not, cannot stand in the way. Your Honour, my client wishes for the proceedings to continue post haste. 
He's designated that I speak for him on all matters. Yes, I have an affidavit signed by him. He eagerly wishes that this global spotlight will be drawn elsewhere. In fact, it was this global attention which was a factor in his downfall. Continue on the matter of his health. As you may be aware, my client, Rolf Nicolaus Cornelius Gerlitt, has, or I should say had, lived as a near total recluse for several decades. It seems his only outings were to purchase food, and four times a year he travelled by train to visit his heart specialist in Liechtenstein. And what bearing does this have for us today, Councillor? I am losing patience. I only need to offer, Your Honour, that when the news broke about his art collection, the world's eye turned on him. Difficult for any of us, but least of all my client. And because the German government... Ah, hidden... Councillor! Careful what you say about the state that I represent and that you live under. But it is a fact, Your Honour, that this raid, yes, raid, took place on my client's home at dawn in 2011. The world was unaware of the cache of Nazi-era artworks until Focus News magazine broke the story in 2013. Are you admitting that the works were ill-gotten gains leading up to and during World War II? No, of course not, Your Honour. I merely use the term Nazi as a descriptor, not by any admission of crime on behalf of my client. I Julius trust Gerlitz. you. Central issue before the court today is a question of property and therefore contingent tax liability. How do you begin to propose her girl its innocence? Your Honour, this whole affair is a misplaced effort. We should not be here. Oh, really? And where, do tell, Councillor, should we be? Yet again, you try my patience. The statute of limitations on looted Nazi artwork expired in 1975. Therefore, even if, and this is a virtually unassailable if, if my client had in his possession items deemed to be stolen during the war era, the window of culpability closed nearly 40 years ago. The works were seized by the German government in good faith, Councillor. If the confiscation was legal, then why was it kept a government secret for nearly two years? The discretions of underling bureaucrats is not of my concern. And as for you, your place is not to challenge me. Your place in this German court of law is to answer my questions. Yes, Your Honour. Thank you for your kind and timely understanding. May it please you that I proceed? Of course, Your Honour. How did her girl it come to have these works, many of which have already been proven to have been acquired by nefarious, illegal means? I object to the use of the word nefarious, Your Honour. You miss my point entirely. My client committed no crime whatsoever. How did this collection come under the authority of the son, this, this Cornelius Gerlitt? How did he not return the works with the value of, what is it, one billion euros to their rightful owners? None of us, not my father, nor myself, none of us committed any crimes. The collection is an honorable one. So we are to just take him at his word. My father was a good man. End of story. Your Honour, my client led an extremely sheltered life. His father was an exceptionally important figure in his life. It was not in his nature to question his father. Certain constraints and understandings are to be taken as given. Under my authority, yes they are, Councillor, and I am gratified that you are beginning to grasp that concept. Certain distant relatives have come forward to agree that the works were her girl's entire world. At night, in particular, when he felt safe from the prying eyes of the world, he would take individual pieces out of their safe keeping places and was, was with them, as if they were alive. Art was my client's lifeline to the world. How? How did these relatives know if nobody visited him? Well, people talk, Your Honour, not speaking legally, but speaking realistically, in the world of blood relations, things of the dark, things of the light, they become known as the facts that they are, and even more so the truths which they represent. Art anchors her girl to life on this earth. If 
they were, I, his family, if they were, one makes provisions for what they love, provides a future as best as possible. Even her girl is in his, how shall we say, unusual mental state. I know I will die. I must make provisions. Can you help me with this? What then, Councillor Hoffman? What then? I apologise profusely, Your Honour. Uh, this call may pertain to the matters at hand. May I? I would normally object to such rudeness in my courtroom, but uh, proceed. I've got your text. Terrible timing. The judge is quite disenchanted with me. <laughs> what? When? Is there nothing to be... Yes, Rosa, I understand. Please try and stay calm. But don't call anyone. I'm going to send someone soon. We always knew this was coming. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, Councillor, what did your ever so important call have to serve us today? Your Honour, it is Hungarian. Yes, when is he coming here? Your Honour, Cornelius Gurlitt is dead. Dead? Uh, how do you know? Are you, are you sure? That was this medical attendant who I just spoke to. Cornelius died minutes ago at home. I'm sure it was his heart. My God. This complicates things. Actually, Your Honour, it may simplify matters. Somewhat. Speak plainly. It may now be made public that Cornelius Gurlitt bequeathed his entire collection to the Art Museum in Bern, Switzerland. How do you know this? Are you sure? Yes, we drew up this last will and testament together. Oh, what, what was his connection to this museum in Switzerland? None whatsoever, Your Honour. He's never even been there. Well, this does not exactly support your claim that the works were as dear as family to him. If they were, then why would he give them to some unknown institution in Switzerland? To get them out of Germany. Why get them out of Germany? To Cornelius, Germany was both the homeland and the enemy. It endangered his father. It wanted to destroy or deport these works during World War II. Then the German government moved again and seized this same property. The very creations it so despised and wanted to destroy during the war. Times, Councillor, have changed. Have they, Your Honour? Have they? And there is more. Cornelius wished all works proven to belong to others through rightful provenance to be returned. With what compensation to his estate? None whatsoever, Your Honour. Perhaps the works of art taught him about the ruins of suffering and injustice, too. How? We talked at length. Cornelius and I, a funny little man who folded in upon himself, much like the handwritten letters he was so fond of writing. Dying alone, as he did, bereft of his created family must have been particularly hard. And can you imagine the sole mission of a lifetime which he believed he had failed? So, in sum, this means what, Councillor? Perhaps the collection, the works themselves, taught Cornelius to face an inevitable responsibility. Perhaps the art was a way to embrace the prison of his strange humanity and give back in the only way that he could. Speak legally. Cornelius Gurnett formally endorsed the 1998 doctrine on Nazi confiscated art. This document specifies how, if you will, stolen artwork is to be treated by the nations of the world. An old, lonely man at the center of a Nazi-made storm. His endorsement gives more strength to a doctrine that many nations currently only pay lip service to. But it remains that throughout the years, her girl didn't try to return the works. He kept them a secret. That's right, Your Honour. He was hiding his family to protect them. <laughs>
so worried about you. Strangely enough, old man, I've been worried about you too. But watching even from afar, I have seen you become a lion. Will you ever forgive me for selling you, for sending you away? I can, and I do. Because you forgave me so many times when I berated you to be strong. Be well. Cornelius. Over here, Cornelius. Roswell. I've come to see you. Roswell, is it you? Oh, yes, of course, it's really me, Roswell. Casper is stabling the horses, giving them a nice brush down and a bucket of mash. Oh, they deserve it. The ride was magnificent. The sea was like thunder. And we were all speed and joy and love. Oh, there was love in the bracing air. You should have been with us. Will you come with us next time? Next time? Yes. I haven't any schnapps just now, but will you come again? Will you? Of course. Just call, Cornelius. Just call, my friend. Thank God. Thank God. You've all come home. You are home. I never thought I'd see you again. But here you are. Here you are. You'll be pleased with me. Yes, you will, pleased with me. I've put things right as best I could. Through your glory and humanity, I have learned what to do. You will all go to your own safe place around the world, and we will stay safe in Switzerland. And you will come visit me whenever you like. I will be there, waiting, with so much love. I will see you again. Everyone will see you again. One day, Connie, you will rise and show everyone what a good and decent man you are. The silver lining of your cloud will illuminate much, though you will not see it. The light will shine around the entire world. Bon voyage, mon chéri. Workshop. Her second full-length play, which was stolen, 
uh, had a stage public reading at La Mama in New York in 2017. So this is the European staging of this play. And for the 2017 Nashville Fringe Festival, she produced stories from the back seat, a one-act collection of monologues from her experience as a Lyft driver. <coughs> there we go. She's at the work, she's at work on the full length, Do I Have To? An intersection of artificial intelligence, reincarnation, and divine games. So what I'm going to ask, the first question that I'm sure you'd like to know is about the process of about the writing of a play. And first of all, what is the inspiration for this play story? Quickly, thanks to all of the actor and the crew and proud. Please, in the round. <laughs> was when the story broke, it was uh, even outside the, the world of art, it was an international sensation. Not only because the art that it thought to be missing um, was <coughs> suddenly found, but also the fact that the German government had hidden it uh, for several years. So that, it was hard to miss that story if you're interested in art, which I am. Um, also, the the fact that when I learned that the art became his family in a very real sense to him, I thought, well, this is a quirky little person. This can be quite a little good story. <coughs> and of course, you're always looking as a, for a playwright, not only a good story with good conflict, but um, the fewest sets, the fewest characters. And I thought, oh, well, most of this takes place in his apartment. That's, that's good. And um, really, um, on two personal notes, I was interested very much to explore and put forward what I think is the essential power of art that we sometimes, frankly, take for granted, even though sometimes it's priced in the millions. Um, I think whatever is hanging on your walls can be just as powerful for you um, and carry you through. For me, the other personal note is I am, I am well acquainted with loneliness. Um, and I thought, I know this guy. I can do this guy justice. So it was that sort of constellation of ideas that drew me to the work. What I'm going to just explain was that this was in 2012. He was on a train from Zurich. The plays explained it, but it, his name was Cornelius Gurlitt and he was stopped by a customs officer. And then what happened about 12 months later, they broke down his door in Bavaria, and they took all his art away. They never questioned him, nothing was said, and as was said in the play, in 2013, there was a tiny little article in Focus magazine, and then the whole world went mad. And, and what you're seeing is a mixture of fantasy and reality in this play. So some of those facts are in there, but of course the paintings come to life are the works of um, Lynn here to, to describe his fantasy world of how he lived. And that came from a De Stern article, the only interview that he ever gave, where he described his family and that was his works of art. Now the other question I'm going to ask you, Lynn, is do you have a favourite character in the play and who is it? Yes, I do. Um, it's Frau Weinrod, of course. Um, and this, doing this play presented a particular challenge because I knew that we could never show the works of art, no matter what the, where the production was or what the budget, because the provenance wasn't settled, um, the rights permissions would be a nightmare and probably be unaffordable. So my greatest challenge as a Playwright, I think, became a great strength after months of thinking, how am I going to do this? And that's where I came up with the conceit of having characters based on real works in the collection come alive and be costumed like them. And I'm hoping this is not going to be too much of a glare, um, but this is really Frau Weinrock. Um, and so, to me, I adore her because she's kind of like 
you know, I, I'm beginning to be a woman of a certain age. And she kind of represents to me um, somebody who's been rode hard and put up wet, as we say. And, um, but yet she has wisdom, she has humor, she has heart, she's playful. And so to me, she's a personal inspiration. And she was a blast to write. I just loved her. Okay, and the last question I'm going to ask, because we're going to continue this discussion afterwards in the bar. Uh, what do you think the value of art in our society at the moment? What do you think? Well, I think it serves the ancient purposes that it has <coughs> since the caves at Lascaux and before. Um, and I think it applies across all the art forms. It's the only thing really in my estimation, that makes life worth living. It always has been, it always will be. And interestingly enough, it's the artists who always have the last word. It's the arts that endure. So not only can they be a bridge and lift us across the difficult times or help, help us celebrate the magnificent times, but coming from America, as I do, when I think that people in prominent positions such as government act foolishly. They do not understand that the artists will have the last word <laughs> and they shall be sorry. <laughs> so uh, thank you that's, so much. That's lovely. I'm going to end with a little quote from a Vanity Fair article. And it was Cornelius's cousin who, who quoted it. He's a, is Eckhart Gurlitt, a photographer in Barcelona. And what he said about Cornelius was, he's a lone cowboy, a lonely soul, and a tragic figure. He wasn't in it for the money. If he were, he would have sold those pictures long ago. He loved them. They were his home, whole life. Without admirers like that, art is nothing. So I'd like to thank Glyn for coming to the stage reading of Rich My Solon pleasure. My pleasure. at Rich Mix in London. I'd like to thank all of you. I'd like to thank the virtual world, whoever, wherever you may be. And of course, the actors, the technical team, without whom I could not have done it at all. Thank you very much. Charles, he will give you pens. Is there, is the red bag over there.